We are now in a typical Garifuna setting next to the sea. The Garifuna are descendants of West African, Central African island Carib and Arawak people. They arrived in the early 19th century, settling on the southern coast of Belize. Drumming is an integral part of the culture. Their music, called punta, would become the nationally recognized music of Belize. The costume above the stairs is for the Jankunu dance ceremony that is celebrated on the last Sunday of the year. The Garifuna culture always resisted slavery, and the Jankunu dance embodies that resistance. Traditionally, Garifuna foods are based on ground foods, vegetables, and marine produce. However, the single most important food is the cassava, also known as yuca. The process of making cassava bread is arguably the most important tradition practiced by the Garifuna people. We celebrate Garifuna Settlement Day on the 19th of November. This national holiday was founded by Thomas Vincent Tramos, who was a visionary leader for the Garifuna people. giving me this opportunity to be here with you tonight, sharing you um, my first-hand experience as a girl from a woman. Um, by all means, I am not a historian. However, this is just oral information that's been transported to me from one generation to the next. Our history has an oral history, and this now has been, or is now being implemented into books. We're trying to save the books that can be artifacts for tomorrow for our children. I was born in Honduras. Central America, um, with my parents there at three years old, my parents decided to bring me to the United States. They no longer wanted me to live in America because they wanted us to have the American dream. So they flew back and picked up four children and brought them to America. And upon me arriving to America, I was faced with a place that did not look like my village. You know, Honduras has 52 departments of Wigadifuna people that live in these villages. Um, and here in Belize, there's a smaller sector. We found Garifuna people also in Guatemala, in an area called Puerto Arias and La Buga. And then you also find Garifuna people in Orinoco, in Nicaragua. There are still some Garifuna people in St. Vincent, in the Sandy Bay area. And I believe it's also an area called Gregstown. You can find Garifuna people there. However, those brothers and sisters in St. Vincent have been stripped away from their history. So as far as the food that we eat, the culture and things like that, we are now trying to navigate from Honduras, Belize, Guatemala, the United States, and trying to go back and teach. When we first were interbreeding with the Black Caribs and Arawak Indians, what our culture was initially. And thanks to those brothers and sisters, they have been open to wanting to learn our culture and their culture all over again because it's pretty much been taken away from them without their choice, right? So, um, there's a population of about 300,000 um, Garifuna people in Honduras. In the 1700s, you know, we were settled in um, the island of St. Vincent. So originally, we are from the continent of Africa. Um, some say that we are originally from the Ashanti, Igbo, and Yoruba people from West Africa. I am right? From Ghana, right? From Ghana, yeah. Right. So um, they said that we're from there. Some say that we have come from Mali and other places, but still, we're still trying to make research to be able to have concrete evidence. Um, there was said that there was a shipwreck, which pretty much these supposed to be slaves ended up on the island of St. Vincent, right? During the time they, they interbreeded with the Black Caribs and the Arawak Indians, um, because black people don't miss, they actually interbreed, um, just to clarify that. And then from there, the French arrived, so that way they could be able to turn us into slaves. So we revolted against slavery. We did not want to be slaves. Um, and we had a chief, his name was Chief Joseph Sapoyer, and his wife, Maralva. And this, he was the king of our tribe, the paramount, the chief. And he pretty much led a war against the, the British or the French, so that way we wouldn't become slaves. During that war, of course, the colonizer came in and killed um, an army of men and women, including our paramount of our tribe. And then we were kicked off to go die off on the island of Baliso. 
which is right off the coast of um, St. Vincent. It's not too far. Um, by boat, you could probably say like 45 minutes getting in. Um, and I have went to St. Vincent myself, so I'm speaking to you about first-hand experience. When I got to that island, all you saw was nothing but a bunch of salt water and land. I don't know how my people was able to survive through that travesty. Um, they pretty much created their boats and navigated to Honduras, Belize, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and settled there. So what you're going to be seeing tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. is going to be that same reenactment as how we got here. So it's not going to be a yacht. It's going to be the boat that was used during those times. It's going to be the leaves and the different type of instruments, intricate instruments that was used so we could be able to navigate and get to this land. And we were supposed to be the people that were supposed to be killed off 222 years ago, but we survived. And we have multiplied. And just also to add on to your um, channel, or to add on to this interview, um, I want to reiterate that front of people are spiritual people. We never practice Catholicism, we never practice Christianity. We have our own spirituality, which is our own religion. It's called the good. The good is, you know, we believe in our ancestors, and we have a hut house, which is a spiritual house built on the beach, where we have food, liquor, water. Everything that our ancestors was able to consume is what we go out and we put out there for them. And then we have the spiritual godmother, who is the master of ceremony. And it, it's, it's just something so spiritual that we connect to. And we praise our God, which is we call it, you know, we call God, we call it Baba, Bungyu, Faraudia. We have three different names for our gods. Um, and we praise that in the beach. We hold each other's hands. Sorry, pinky finger like this. And then you, Babema honey. Babema honey is when you singing and you pray to the ancestors like this and you call them on. It's not devil worshiping, it's who we are. But since the people started practicing Catholicism and Christianity and other religion, they have been told that their spirituality, what their essence was at the beginning, is now devil worshiping when it's not. I feel like as religion we should all respect each other. Spirit, everybody's spirituality should be respected as well. So people could be able to have a freedom of choice. Now, the from the story is one story that I feel like every household should be able to know about, just like the way people should be able to know about the tribes in Nairobi, Kenya, yes. to from the people from Mombasa called the Maasai people, yes. all the way to the people from yes. Ghana, the Gwar, the Ashantis. These are important um, blueprints of the world that people should know in their homes. So I give you, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, once it's again. good. Like um, as soon as I've, I've been in Belize for nearly two. Years. As soon as I heard the Garifuna drum, I felt the connection. I knew that there was, well, something, there was something there. And then someone told me West Africa, and I was like, I would delve into it. Ironically, that you're saying that this is my first time coming to see the Garifuna settlement okay. here in Belize. The irony behind it is that in Honduras, we're treated as second class citizens. Honduras don't respect us or acknowledge us as citizens of that country even though we are the indigenous people of that country, okay? So in Belize, when I arrived here, I'm coming and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna walk to the airport. I'm not thinking nothing of it. As soon as I walk to the airport, I see an image of the flag of my tribe. I caught chills, goosebumps. I, I just didn't even know what to think when I saw that image. And then to hear the drums in the background as I was going through customs, and the men are singing and playing the drums and the maraca and the, and the um, we call it the wadabake, which is the conch shell used as a trumpet. That, it, it, it just, what made me, made something come out of me, it was just like, wow. And then everyone is just asking, like, what is that? What is that? And as a proud full Garifuna woman, I'm there like, oh, those are my people. That's my flag. And those, 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 that music, resonates with my spirit and I felt like my ancestors were with me like my ancestors were pleased to be able to see and hear an image like that so just going through that whole experience in the airport and being acknowledged in Belize and Belize being a smaller country it just meant so much to me even watching the TVs and I see um, the, the, the the tour guides playing how our men are dressed up in the, the girl from the gals dancing the Jankunu music 
We call it one hour, right? And then the women are dancing the music and they have their um, their gonu. Some people call it bata, which is their um, girlfriend or attire. That every inter- intricate detail meant so much. So much. So I- I'm thankful to Belize for even showing me the opportunity. And talking about from the way you're talking, I don't know, did you ever hear of the year of return in Ghana? The year of return? Uh, did you hear of it? The, what's that, is something castle? The, yeah, um, the Cape Coast castle. The Cape Coast castle, like yes. Yeah. So, I'm trying to make a trip to Ghana so I can yeah. be able to return if back you get, to Yeah, if you can get a chance. Just the year of return, there are a lot of content. Yes. Um, it's something that I, I am a pro-black woman. As a girl for the woman, I am pro-black. I'm all for wanting to know about black people supporting black business. I'm all about expanding and bettering ourselves. So being able to go to Ghana is something, yeah, is, is a trip yeah. that I know that that trip is going to change. My, it, I, I've been to different parts of the world, but I know that particular trip is going to change so much. And I want to be able to do that with my family so that way they can be able to see that, you know, we didn't choose to leave Africa. In Africa, uh, black people's story all over the world does not begin with slavery. Slavery interrupted black success. It, it interrupted black history because of what we build in ancient Egypt and all over the world. You know, we already had navigated to different parts of the world before slavery existed, before Christopher Columbus' story. So um, I think as we continue to dig deep and read and educate and research, um, about our essence and our true history, we'll be able to understand that, like I said, slavery interrupted our black history. You are a woman of knowledge, <laughs> and thank you very much for sharing it once again. Oh my if gosh. I, we, we will keep saying goodbye and we'll keep going. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, enjoying yeah, it yeah. so much. Thank you. Very and then, Margaret, for the next song, I'm going to say it to you, say, let me love you to me. Darling, what do I have here? Boom, this is going to be fun. Nina, thank you for giving me the opportunity oh, to speak right. to you to this interview. Thank you. Same. And Anna Shanti will say Medasi. Oh, Medasi. Okay. Medasi. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. Itarala. Right. <laughs>